The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or to view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. Okay, this is a course which looks at the interplay between a set of perennial philosophical issues concerning our moral behavior, why we act the way we do when we do what we ought to do, or when we do what we think we ought to do, or when we fail to do what we think we ought to do. So looking at the relation between the philosophical theories of that and a rapidly growing empirical body of work coming from psychology and from empirical economics and from neuroscience um, to see how much the empirical sciences can shed, how much light the empirical sciences can shed on those philosophical concerns and to see perhaps how much the traditional philosophical concerns can help guide the direction of the empirical research. So uh, this is a course which starts by looking at one of the age-old issues, which is the issue between egoism and altruism, the extent to which we act egoistically and the extent to which, on the other hand, we do things for the benefit of others or maybe to hurt others, even at cost to ourselves. So this is an issue which philosophically has been discussed for a very long time, goes back at least to Plato, and which has been the subject of a lot of experimental research in recent years, the last 15 or so years. Um, one of the interesting things that's been found there is that people are not entirely egoistically motivated. They're prepared to spend their own money, money they've just won in a game, or um, other resources they have, in order to do a number of things. One of those things they're prepared to do is actually to punish people who they think have themselves behaved badly. So already you start to see, even in very simple games that are played, you start to see the beginnings of a certain kind of moral motivation coming in, not always the one we were expecting, but um, one whereby people are primarily motivated to punish other people they think are not themselves behaving morally. So that really sort of sets the, the uh, tenor for the course, which is to keep looking at those traditional questions and how the empirical work bears on them. So from there, we go on to look at issues of which states it is that move us. So many philosophers have thought that's going to be just beliefs and desires. But we look to see whether there are other states which might be important, so whether there are kind of ideas of commitments or um, resolutions which, by which people are motivated, even if there are not beliefs and desires that are moving them at the time. Um, and from that, we look at issues of strength of will and weakness of will, a big and very interesting literature there on um, how temptation works and how we can resist temptation. From that, we look at some extreme cases of that. We look at the addiction literature and the extent to which addiction can still be seen as a kind of properly motivated behavior rather than just the sort of automatic behavior which some people sometimes think of addiction as being. And from that into issues of free will and determinism, again, so perennial philosophical issues which have been discussed for many, at least a couple of thousand years. And um, again, we're looking at the ways which contemporary empirical findings can shed light on those, on those uh, traditional philosophical questions. From there, we move on to look at self-deception, um, how you can know about yourself, and then on to what in some ways is the core of the course, namely the explicitly moral motivation. So we're looking at what it is that makes people behave well, why they don't behave badly, extent to which that in turn can be understood as an egoistic thing, or extent to which it's working in some other way. And uh, this is an area where there's been an explosion of empirical research in the last 15 or 20 years, um, especially in the last 10 years, from a wide range of fields, from uh, social psychology, through experimental economics, through neuroscience, and all this ties in with those traditional philosophical questions. So the aim is to see if we can integrate those as much as we can. Uh, given the state of the empirical research, there's an awful lot we don't know, and so an awful lot of open questions are left. But I think it's, we're already at the point where we can really shed some real light on some of the philosophical questions by looking at that empirical work. And I think hopefully we can shed light on the empirical work and suggests ways for the empirical work to go in the light of some of the more traditional moral, political, philosophical concerns.